this is a classic example of being able to rotate your coordinate system to better suit your needs. Now, what we did is we uh, rotated the coordinate system uh, at an angle theta clockwise because now we have normal force pointing in the y direction and friction force pointing in the op uh, negative x direction. So automatically two of the three forces that act on this box are going to perfectly align with one axis. So that makes life a lot easier, especially if we're going to delineate down to two uh, dimensions when solving the problem. So first let's go ahead and uh, talk about what we do know. What well, we do know, and it's not directly given to us numerically, but we know what theta is, we know what the mass of the box is, we know what G is, and we know what the coefficient of kinetic friction is. And what we need to find is the acceleration in the X direction, which we can go ahead and just say the acceleration. Okay, so our goal is to find the acceleration. Let's go ahead and implement Newton's second law to do this. And we're going to implement it in the x direction. And if we need, we might implement it in the y direction. Mind you, again, the x direction goes uh, top left and to the bottom right. So Newton's second law states that the sum of all forces in the x direction is the mass of the box times the acceleration in the x direction, which we'll go ahead and just say ma. All right, all the forces acting on the box are three. Um, in the positive direction, we have the force of gravity in the x direction. So this component of the gravitational force. We have uh, frictional force. And oh, we don't have new, uh, normal force. We don't need to use normal force because normal force goes perpendicular to the x direction. So you see why coordinate system rotation is very, very important. So we're going to set that equal to ma. A is what we need to find. We know M, uh, and then we don't know what these two are. So let's go ahead and break these down a little bit more. Um, FG in the X direction, as we might have uh, guessed geometrically, if the angle theta uh, of this ramp is, is right here, then we can use uh, kind of like alternate interior anger, angles and other geometric properties to figure out that theta of this little force triangle is here. So to find Fg sub x, we're gonna be using SOHCAHTOA, and in this case, cosine of, oh, sorry, sine of theta would be used here. So we say that Fg in the x direction is just Fg sine theta minus, let's go ahead and break this down. Um, this is force of friction kinetic because the box is moving is equal to ma. Let's break it down even more. Force of gravity in general is just going to be mg, and now we're going to add in sine theta. Uh, the force of friction kinetic is just going to be mu kinetic times normal force, and that's equal to ma. Let's go ahead and reevaluate what we know and what we don't know. Uh, we know mass, we know mu, because that's what's given to us. We know what theta is, and we know g and m. We don't know f of n right now. So this is where we go ahead and do our little side quest. Okay, our side quest uh, will be finding out what fn is. And since it points up and down in this rotated coordinate system, we're gonna go ahead and invoke Newton's second law for the y direction. The box is not gonna move up or down in this coordinate system. So we're gonna go ahead and say that this is equal to zero. So that being said, let's go ahead and look at all the forces. We have normal force pointing up, and that's what we need to find eventually. And we have force of gravity in the y direction pointing down. That's this component of gravity. Let's go ahead and set that equal to zero. And voila, you see that normal force is equal to force of gravity in the y direction. Again, using SOHCAHTOA, this is going to be a cosine theta addition there. So that's going to equal to Fg cosine theta, which then can be broken down further into Mg cosine theta. Now, no, notice here that uh, for most problems, not ramp related, but if a block or something is on leveled ground, normal force is just going to equal to Mg. That happens for 90% of all physics problems on the surface of the earth, for example. 
But for this ramp where the block is on unleveled ground, F of N, so normal force is equal to F G Y. So the main point is that if a, if a block is not moving up or down in that particular coordinate system, normal force is going to equal directly uh, equal to the opposite uh, vector to the normal force. And in this case, it's just going to be F G Y. So be careful with that. Don't always assume normal force is M G. Sometimes on unleveled ground, for example, it's M G cosine theta or even sine theta in some cases. So side quest over, let's go ahead and continue our work here. We are going to bring down M G sine theta. Now mu k, and instead of normal force, we're going to go ahead and put down uh, m g cosine theta. And that's going to equal to m times a, which is what we're trying to find. Luckily for us, uh, we can cancel out one thing. And that's going to be all m, so mass does not matter. And already we have a isolated, so that makes uh, the algebra a lot easier. So a is thus equal to g sine theta minus mu k g cosine theta. And uh, let's go ahead and further reduction here, make it simpler. It's going to be g sine theta minus mu k cosine theta. Let's go ahead and check to make sure, well, I think this is right, but let's check to make sure that it, it has everything. So theta is given to us mu k is given to us, theta is given to us, and g is given to us. We didn't even need math, so that's, that makes it a lot easier. So this is the acceleration that the block is going to uh, incur while uh, sliding down this ramp with a friction coefficient of mu k.